Christian Livingstone here, and I just thought I'd let uh, some family and friends know uh, what's happening out, out in my backyard here, the, the melon patch. Uh, uh, the cantaloupes are starting to ripen now, so uh, I just now uh, plucked about a dozen of them. I, I guess they started ripening about two days ago. One of the possums let me know he, he had clogged and uh, kind of mauled one of them, but uh, these uh, new varieties I've chosen are a lot uh, tougher skin than the uh, uh, earlier ones, so uh, and they gotta work a little harder to get at these things. But anyway, the, this is the main variety that I selected this year. This is, uh, as you can see, a smaller uh, sized cantaloupe, but uh, it's got a tough netting and skin, uh, very sweet. It's called a sugar cube variety. They get a little larger than this, but I'd say this is average. And I like this size. You know, I, bigger isn't always better for fruits. You know, the way you store them into the, the fridge and stuff, uh, they attract, you know, after you slice them, they just don't taste as well. So I like the smaller uh, fruits for uh, melons. And uh, I've got some watermelons too that are uh, uh, what they call an icebox variety, easier to get into the fridges. Uh, but I also have some uh, big fancy uh, cantaloupes, not as many, but uh, it's a, a variety called Ambrosia, and you'll see them there, it's just big, massive, and uh, I haven't tasted one of those yet, they're taking longer to uh, uh, harvest, but uh, these ones are ready, these ones uh, I'm, I'm guessing I'll get uh, uh, out of uh, 100 plants overall with the cantaloupes, uh, probably 70 of them uh, in this variety, uh, I don't know, all together 100 plants, probably four or 500 melons, uh, more or less, some spoilage, maybe some uh, critters get at some, but I'm guessing three or 400 uh, easy uh, with a, a pretty good uniform uh, color and shape uh, with no real scarring or defects. These these are pretty good looking melons and uh, they taste well too. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to pop one open. I'm going to show you uh, me eating it. Sorry, I, I wish you could be here too and, and share it. But uh, we'll go out into the melon patch as well and I'll just uh, kind of pan around and show you, you know, what's going on out there and maybe the, the two different varieties. Maybe we'll even get over to the uh, watermelons a, a little bit. I don't know. They're going to take a little longer. So uh, let me get to cutting this. Okay, I just sliced it open. This one looks a little overripe around the edges there. But after I scoop out the uh, seeds, you can see the presentation's not too bad. And uh, it's actually uh, pretty nice and, uh, and soft. It's not hard. Wow, it's soft, it's sweet, it's juicy, not being sloppy. So yeah, I wouldn't be ashamed to sell these or share them. And look how uh, close the, uh, the rind gets to, to the flesh there, very close. So there's not a lot of waste, just about whatever this weighs, you can eat most of it. I'm going to take the other half and set a trap. Maybe I'll show you that too for the possum because uh, they'll just get out there and steal from you. Okay, let's get on out there. Okay, and here we are in the melon patch. We're right in the heart of the cantaloupe section. There's uh, four rows, about 50 foot a piece on the cantaloupe, and a uh, total of about a hundred plants. And over there, that's where a couple of half rows of uh, watermelon begin, and a couple more full rows of watermelon. So they've got about three rows at 50 foot uh, a piece average, but uh, the spacing is closer on them, so there still are a hundred plants on the watermelons. The, 
you know, the vining is a little more compact on the uh, watermelon, so you can uh, put more on a row uh, for watermelons. But as you can see, these uh, uh, cantaloupe uh, plants are very robust. It's just like waves in a sea. And if I didn't uh, keep moving the uh, vines out of the way, all these aisleways uh, would be filled up. And you know, I couldn't get through here, and, you know, it's no secret that I, you know, spend most of my time rolling around on a wheelchair, so, uh, you know, it's still obviously doable for, for me to uh, do all this stuff, but I'll zoom in right here. Here are some, I don't know if you can see them in the sunshine here, let me get, let me zoom out and Take my little tool here, implement. And you can see how they're all ganged up, I think. I don't know if you can see. See, but there's, there's about, uh, I don't know, five, six, eight, eight melons all, all ganged up in there. Hard to see, I think. Let me come over here. It might be a little shadier and easier to see. These are those uh, ambrosia ones I was talking about. And they are all ganged up as well, but they're massive by comparison in size. Right in this section here, I don't know, looks like about eight or ten of them. There's plenty of them, but uh, I guess I've probably only got about I don't know 15, 20 plants of this this variety. And uh, let me see, over there are the ones I plucked. Uh, just about 30 minutes ago. There's about a dozen plucked today. I'm thinking tomorrow there's going to be a lot more that uh, are ready. Uh, you know, the color on them is light green under the netting, but uh, these uh, sugar babies are real easy to uh, uh, detect when they're uh, when they're ripe because they, they turn a, a kind of a pale yellow, almost khaki color. And, uh, you know, when you just push them on the vine, they can just about roll right off and, uh, you know, get ready. Okay, so uh, we've seen uh, pretty much the plants and we're sitting in the row. But uh, let's go over to the, uh, oh, the... Uh, trap. As you can see, it's uh, open-ended on both both sides. Uh, there are some that uh, only have it uh, open on one end, and uh, when it's open on both sides, uh, I think it's pretty well known that the critters are more likely to get captured because, you know, it's not like going into a, a closed-end box. It, uh, you know, as they snoop up to, to one end, it appears open all the way through, and depending on which direction they're coming from, you know, it's open on, on both ends. And uh, as you can see, I uh, suspend the uh, bait or fruit from up top there just to keep, you know, I don't know, the uh, ants and stuff off it. Uh, you know, it, it's dangled right over the uh, trigger there at the bottom. And what I'll also do, I don't know if you can see, but I'll make sure the dirt actually covers the bottom of the trap. So when the animals walk inside the trap, they're not feeling that metal mesh under their feet. They're feeling just more dirt. All the way as they walk up uh, to the bait, it feels like dirt underneath them because it is. And uh, it's just another one of those subtle points that uh, you know, if you make it more inviting, they're more likely to get trapped. And uh, uh, that bait is an upside down half of a cantaloupe, and I'm going to refresh that. Uh, but 
Also, you'll you'll want to uh, undoubtedly uh, keep in mind if you're ever going to be trapping critters to uh, keep it in their pathway. You know, don't uh, just put it anywhere. This uh, back uh, side of the melon patch is, you know, kind of a through fair for, you know, me and critters. And I believe the critters come from this direction. That's the direction they came last year. So I set the trap uh, in that direction, you know, closer to the direction they're coming. Because, you know, you don't want them to, you know, if I put this trap at the other end, closer to where the melons, you know, the cantaloupes are, it would be at the end of their journey. Theoretically, they could, you know, go, you know, chomp on all my melons and, and maybe get trapped at the tail end, but it's better to capture them before they get to the melon patch. So if you can make it appetizing for them on the way in, you'll, you'll capture them first and uh, they, they won't uh, mess up your patch. So uh, that's what I try to do. I believe they're still gonna probably be coming from this direction. That's uh, where they must live out, out in that direction. But you never know, they, they might uh, have uh, you know, a new nest, a new home and uh, come from the other direction. So we'll see. But as you can see, this is you know, just a natural pathway along the back. It's darker back here. The uh, possum are, are nocturnal, you know, they don't like to be seen. They're very stealthy. And so they naturally will skirt around the edges or the periphery first out of the uh, lighted areas around the fence lines. And, you know, as you might have noticed, I, I've got a couple of... Uh, but a couple of uh, solar lights out there that, uh, I don't know, kind of highlight the trees. There's one of them on it. It's already come on. But they uh, highlight the trees at night and kind of create a little drama. As the trees in the corner uh, blow in the wind, I can look out the window and see kind of some eerie trees kind of swaying at night. So they'll stay uh, away from those corners first, and they'll just uh, run down these little aisleways, staying out of the light. I've, I've watched them. I've sat out here last season in a car with a pellet gun before I had the trap. And, you know, I, I kind of know how they move, kind of know how uh, they like to uh, uh, pick their, their traffic patterns. So, you know, I, I got a little edge on them. And last season, I caught a bunch of them. I mean, it, uh, it really was kind of fun. So, let me see. Here are some of the crimson sweets uh, ten tending to uh, cluster up also. There's about four of them in there, all clustered. Hope that uh, my... Uh, Sunflower plants would have been blossomed by this time, uh, by harvesting time, so it throws a little color out here, but they're not far off. Uh, these ones will be uh, either a, uh, a lemon yellow colored one or an orange one, so they're kind of offbeat kind of colors. They're not the standards, and, and plus the sunflowers look real good from a distance. You know, this is the back of the lot here, and, uh, you know, I've got a big old sliding glass door, and that's half of what I've done done all this for, is to develop a view out that big old window, because I keep the, the drapes uh, open, and I look out the window, you know, almost all the time. So, you know, against the back uh, fence line there, the uh, sunflowers look great. But uh, they're just not there yet. Okay, well... Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time.